Welcome back to Worth the Effort Woodworking. Uh, I've been doing a lot of production turning behind the scenes this past week, so I want to just take a day or two off, uh, a weekend so to speak, and just do something for fun. Some of y'all might remember this little raised garden bed I built uh, in collaboration with Anna of All Trades. I think I'm going to add a few more plant holders. Uh, a few weeks ago, I built this little kind of thing for my hummingbird feeder, which they never came around. Uh, I think I'm going to build a few of those and maybe a stand for a bunch of potted plants so I can grow things like uh, lettuce and stuff outside the sun for most of the day. My local community has a recycling business called Green Guys, where a lot of people take like metal and stuff like that. I went to them, picked up some of these little quarter inch thick pieces of metal right there uh, for 25 cents a pound. And my local metal mart, they had a scrap pile right here where they were selling these uh, four, 14 or 18 gauge uh, one by one tubes for basically 50 cents a pound. And then my local metal place had this sheet right here, which that's just straight retail. Uh, so basically the embedded in my truck is about 250 bucks worth of metal. I'm going to try to make a whole bunch of things, including a little wagon, but that won't be in this video. You'll have to go to my Instagram for that. Now this being welding, please understand, it's out of my comfort zone. Huh? This is a learning experience for me. So I just thought it'd be fun to bring you all along. Now the first project I'm going to be doing is this right here. I'm going to make another one of those. Uh, basically how I made this one was that same tube that I just bought and I had some thinner ones. I just drilled some holes here and here and so I could screw that down. I think it's kind of ugly. I think I can do a little bit better with some of the scrap we bought from the, from the salvage yard. To make the base so that I can attach it, I'm going to use these quarter inch pieces right here. But that's ugly. Let's see if we can improve that a little bit with a plasma cutter. Now in woodworking, we pattern route sometimes. I think I am going to try to do the same concept, except with my gun, which I need to clean up quite a bit. It kind of looks to me like the drag tip is about a quarter of an inch over from the side, the center of it where it cuts. So maybe if I just make my template a half inch too big, quarter inch on each side, it'll all work out. So I think what I'm going to be able to do is I've got this temp half template clamped down. I'll just kind of start and work my way around and finish up, then flip it over. We'll see. sucked. Maybe a template was a stupid idea. Let's try just freehanding it. Well, that looks kind of stupid.
Those straight lines it is. Not perfect, not even close to good, but it'll work. This feels kind of like cheating, but if I'm just doing straight lines, I might as well just use a saw. What do wood turners say? You can't cut it, sand it. I guess a grinder's like sanding, huh? Now one of the components I've got to use are these hooks and they've got that zinc coating on it and welding on zinc is dangerous plus you know you can't paint it. So if you just soak them in uh, vinegar for a few hours it'll dissolve that zinc. So next I gotta cut the parts to size. I will tell you this, one of the reasons I'm redoing this one is because this was a little bit too long. It hung out too far, so I'm gonna make it a little bit shorter and I'll try and do a better job of welding, obviously, because this practice on this brace right here. But the most important thing I need to practice is my consistency, because if you can tell, this thing is canted over to the side. I think I got it pretty 90 degrees this way, but definitely not this way. So, I'm going to do better this time.
with that done and placing it an inch and a half down from the top, I see that I can only get, the brace is gonna be kind of small, a three inch brace. Probably should have cleaned these off before I cut them. It would have made life a lot easier. So with my first one, I basically screwed up. I drilled a hole right here and I welded it wrong. I had planned on putting an S hook into that hole and then welding that on. What I ended up doing is just sliding the S hook on the end and filling it up with weld and that, that worked pretty well but I thought that a normal hook would be a lot better. So I've now had two of these in here for a good four hours and I, I went to the store and bought a third one because I didn't have it. But you could see that most of the nickel in that amount of time is gone and we're down to raw steel. To give you a comparison, here's a nickel plated S hook and that's just the raw steel. Pretty cool, huh? Here's the one I put in about two hours ago. And you can see the nickel is still coming off on that one, but at least compared to a regular one that hasn't been in vinegar, you can tell all the zinc is gone. So it's safe to weld on and we'll be able to paint it. With a quick trip to the drill press, I now have something that'll fit these bolts right. So I'm probably gonna cut about an inch off of these with a with a, a cutoff wheel, and that'll be the first thing we weld up. So I wanna try and get them straight up and down. Even. Tell me, am I getting a little bit better? Next up, I've got to figure out how to get this to stay 90 degrees. I've got these magnets but I'm not sure how well they're gonna work our dad bought them and he seems to think they'll work okay so I've got one for one side and you put one on the other side and then tack it up is that how this thing works does that look straight to y'all oh well we'll find out
battery died on me while I was tacking this one up. But you know, same thing happened as in my prototype. That first one I did, it was kind of angled. With this one, I had the 90 degree magnets on it. I thought I had it pretty straight up and down, but when I tacked it, it bent to one side. Maybe down in the comments below, somebody can explain to me what's going on here. I don't know. Maybe if I weld this side that's leaning, uh, the guy who showed me a few ticks that it kind of runs away from heat, will it push it this way? Okay, grade me. Eh, that's not too good there. I could do better there. Okay, grade me. Before the grinder. Maybe a little more functional, but not as pretty. Last one, grade me. That's something went on weird in that corner. Next up, these little three inch brace pieces are going on like this. I think I'm just gonna tack it and hold it. Okay, here's the third brace. This was probably the worst of them. I had a hard time welding up and down. I actually ended up cheating going like that. I'm gonna to have to learn, I guess they call that welding on the vertical. I just found that for some reason I ended up burning a big hole in there. So there you go, you can grade that last one. The last thing I need to do is fill that hole up there. So I think I'm gonna take my uh, grinder or my cutting wheel and cut off some uh, of the end pieces of another blank, just three of them, and just weld that in there. We won't ask, be asking you to grade this one. That's just ugly. Ugly, ugly, ugly. Well, the end caps got a little bit better, but not much. They're pretty ugly. There must be a trick to it, other than grabbing the grinder and grinding down my welds. But 
because it's just practice, so I'm not doing that. Throw on a coat of primer and paint. We'll hang these things tomorrow. Now one thing I'm really struggling with is getting these parts at a perfect state to stay at a perfect 90 degrees. Because if you notice they go canny wampus on me and it's not consistently canny wampus, so I'm actually not quite sure what I'm doing wrong there. And the hanging of the hummingbird feeder. Hanging basket project is gone because really that's the only reason I did is because I'm getting pissed that all my neighbors can attract hunting bird hummingbirds and I can't. These are supposedly native plants that will attract it. So next, how about a pot rack? So to turn these into a potting rack, I'm gonna try and weld it on the ground right here. Granted, there's a slope here, but if I I think I'll be able to get that flat. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay out all the squares on the concrete and chalk. So here's the plan. What we have right here is a cross piece for the uh, triangle frame. And then the shelves will protrude a little bit forward. I'm doing a triangle frame mainly for the structure. Because I think if I made it uh, parallel, you know, it would have that racking. So that angle right there of the front piece should give it some stability. Though I will add some uh, angle pieces to the main frame right there and right there and the shells will be independent parts that I'll weld up after the fact. So the first thing I need to do is make two or three of these triangle end frames. So to make my life easier, I think this bar right here, I'm just going to leave square. So it's gonna come down here. So this bar right here, I'm gonna to have to have this angle put onto it. I'm also, this angle right here, I'm gonna cut it off and leave a little lip over that one so I can cap that bar. So I'll basically, you know, cut a bar halfway up and then leave it like that. So next, I'll cut these all the stretchers, and then I'll come back and work on this. So, there we 
go. I believe I now have the outside frame ready to tack up. And I'm gonna tack it a little bit different. Normally, I tack all four corners, but maybe that was what was causing it to warp. So I'm gonna try and tack it on the inside and outside and then weld it after all the tacks are done. But first, gotta clean it all up. So with that done, I think I'll just stack the next layer up and just kind of do them right on top of each other, just tacking them up and then I'll weld them all at once after they're all set. Well, here's the second one we tacked up, you know, laying on top of the first one, so it should be pretty close to identical. But it's just tacked up. So I'll do the third one, and then we'll start welding them all up. It sure would be nice to be able to weld all of them, but... Well, y'all tell me, I've been kind of instructed that if I weld this one little piece right here, I need to flip it over and weld the other side pretty much immediately and just go back and forth welding opposite sides to balance out warpage because the heat is going to cause the metal to warp. I mean, is that reasonable? So yesterday I was getting a bit too frustrated doing this one. The welding, I felt like I was rushing because I seemed to be melting the metal more than actually welding it together. I mean, it was just kind of dripping down to the other side and get different gaps. Then I'd have to speed up my hands to kind of fill up. I, it was a lot more hectic than I remember it being. Then I practiced on the grinder a little bit and was very frustrated with that, with the grinding wheel. So I just called it quits and then did a little research this morning on what was going on. I did find that I don't like the grinder wheels, but I much prefer flap discs, even though they're a little bit more expensive in the long run because you use them up more, but I just seem to have a lot more control getting stuff together. But as I use that one, I could see just how badly my welding was because I was so rushed on it. So the internet told me that I should turn down the amperage or volts. These settings right here were basically what the uh, computer told me. So I'm gonna turn it down to the, there. That'll make it less hot so that hopefully I won't burn through. 
and I will also tear, turn down the wire feed speed a little bit so I won't feel so hectic. And we'll see how that works out. welding vertical it just doesn't seem to work so return to the woodworking skill got a twist clamp now I got outriggers so I can weld on the flat so there we go three frames I just kind of ground the face of it because we're gonna be welding stuff there but let's ignore that they're leaning slightly. They're all leaning slightly the same, so it'll work out. Now for the shelves. So this is going to be the width of one of my shelves. It's right at 48 inches. So I think if I make it 48 and a half inches wide, it'll give me space to room you know, a quarter inch on each side to weld that onto the beam. So if you need a redneck bump stop so all your cuts will be consistent, you know, I've got it all lined up. Now I'm just gonna bump the end after it's clamped down to something solid. So now, every time I need any cut, just bump it there and make them all. I've gotta cut eight of these to four, and four feet and a half inch. Okay, yesterday my frustration levels at this project were through the roof. It was because when I was when I cut these miters, I did everything I could with the the chop saw I had to get them square. But there's no lock for a 45. I had to use a combination square, and I was just off. And all of my joints have about you know up to an eighth of an inch gap between the two parts on the miter. And welding that up, you know, I, I would felt like an idiot. I was just jiggling back and forth, and more than likely, I was burning it up. So I was going online, and people were telling me, oh, you're, the internet is telling me, you're running too hot. So I would turn the amperage all the way down for this size done material, and it was still burning up. People were telling me the wire feed was too fast. All this kind of stuff. Well, this morning, I went to New Braunfels uh, welding supply place to buy a new hat because I destroyed the other one out of frustration. And um, 
Well, uh, I told the owner there what, and he told me, uh, he gave me a little kind of lesson on stitch welding. And that has made a, it's a game changer. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Evidently, most of the time you'd want a small gap between them, but if it's too big, what you can do is you can turn the weld gun on and off and you're basically making little dots down the middle and those dots will uh, they'll spread out to each side. But if it's too big, what you can do is you can put a dot on one side, then the other, one side, then the other, and you kind of zigzag the way down there, stitching it together. So this one right here, I will start seeing if it'll work dead in the middle. But the key thing is when you're doing your dots, say this is the entire dot right here, you kind of don't want to aim for the edge. You kind of aim for the halfway point, then the halfway point, then the halfway point as you go down and it all kind of blends together and you get a, a working weld. As you can tell, I was not waiting for it to go fully dry. Basically, you just let it cool off so it looks like metal again, not red. And let me show you what this looks like. I mean, for me, that's not half bad. That's one pass going through. And what I've been doing is then taking a final pass, just my normal method. Granted, this is just somebody learning, but you know what? It's stuck together and there are no holes. I'm happy with that, especially for my given purpose. I'll get better. As I get towards the end, the only part I'm really grinding are any parts that are going to mesh up with some other point. For example, I faced off one of the sides and these points right here. to make it smooth so there's no bumps on the weld. These uprights I didn't get quite perfect. While they are all pretty much identical, which is sets, sets me up pretty well, if you notice, it's not quite plumb. It's canted back a little bit. My guess is that whenever I did the chalk line out and I cut those to the chalk line on the concrete, those legs were just a little bit too long. No big deal. The problem it leaves me though is this is now no longer a reference to come plumb this way, horizontal this way. I can't just come off 90 degrees. So I had to figure out a solution for that. The simplest solution I could come up with is to just to lay it back down on my grid and mark out the back side with the soap stuff of where I wanted each shelf to be. From there, I can just use a level to give me a reference for the other side to give me my weld points. So with all those lines transferred for, for at least two of them, I'll, I'll weld up the, I'll tack up uh, the small one first uh, using these little magnet 90 degree things that I've come to hate.
with that, I believe all the welding is now done. We're gonna get the quick you know, over with the wire wheel and then uh, flap this to kind of round over this these bars. And then it's hoping that paint covers up all my mistakes. What color shall it be, huh? Yep, we went with International Harvester Red. Just like the barrels. Figured red won't show rust as badly. And do y'all realize how expensive it is to color texturize your lawn? Especially when you've just finished out. Thunder's in the background. <laughs> Murphy's Law. Well, we'll let it dry overnight. Then I'll put it in the garden. Head back. What? Head back. Head back. Head back. <laughs> So there we go, just kind of a prep area storage for my little garden. This shelf right here will be lettuce, which I tend to eat mostly, and it's in the shade most of the day, just when the sun passes over mid-noon. And I'll just put a variety of lettuces right here. The upper shelf, the lower shelf, and probably anywhere else I can. Uh, I'm going to be doing a bunch of tree starts to replant the trees I harvest and also I like to have probably you know 20 30 trees ready to plant in anywhere I move in the future so I can have a nice little orchard uh, other than that it's just plant starts I use these uh, what they keep moss containers so basically when I want to plant them in I just cut out the squares and shove the squares in there uh, something I've learned that not all seeds come up so this way I don't waste a lot of time I can just cut out the squares where seeds are actually coming up, put them in here, and I'm ready to rock and roll. So that leaves me with only three things left to really do in this little backyard garden, but I'll give you a quick tour so you can have a before and after picture. Here's what the place looked like before I started. I added a little fenced in area. I threw in some barrels to start the little garden. And now we're at the time where I'm done welding. One of the things I need to do is make a door right here. And I have some really cool plans on that one. It's gonna be kind of a show off video for me on the woodworking scale. Coming in, I ended up putting the hummingbird feeder all the way on the other side of the garden from the bird feeder. I have a feeling the birds are scaring away the hummingbirds. Uh, we have me a Fuji apple. I just replanted this bed right here. It's gonna have a lot of bell peppers. Uh, we have 
bell peppers, tomatoes, hot peppers, that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know what. In these pots right here to keep them separate, um, I put uh, different herbs and stuff like that. And I, my research showed me the herbs that go with the plants to chase away the bugs that the, eat those plants. Judging by how much plants are getting eating, I'm not sure that's really working. But that's how we're going over here. Over here we have some squash, some um, beans, lettuce you can see is not doing well in the direct sun. That's why I'm putting it over there. And then we have uh, some cantaloupes, which just started flowering uh, overnight. And I'm trying some corn and some beans right there. I have a, another Fuji apple tree. And then over here, I have a lemon tree and a lime tree in the same pot. I'm letting the bird bath dry out over one for one day. Uh, here I have one tin can. I'll carry uh, excess uh, potting soil, tools, and here's the rack. I can throw bags of storage right here, my bird seed, one shelf of lettuce. That'll be all trees, 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 and probably a couple things of plants seeding up. This right here is a, another lemon tree and a guacamole tree. And I'm actually kind of survived, surprised it survived because after I transplanted it, that was the only leaf that was left. But as you can see now, it is starting to leaf up. Underneath all the plants are different herbs that supposedly smell bad for bugs. And you will notice one of the things I planted in the pails this time are some, uh, I'm told they're local uh, native flowering uh, plants that do well in drought and hummingbirds love as well as this uh, lantana i believe and the mexican heather are those two plants right there they should go pretty well another lantana plant i forgot what that is and then that was just a, a five dollar plant from lowe's it's probably going to die off it that's an annual i mean all, that's uh, one of the ones that dies every year everything else should be coming back year after year the two other elements I plan on putting. I like to build a little outdoor table right there so I can just work out here. And a little settee right here uh, for me to spoon carve at night. And that's it. My little outdoor garden. What do you think? Hopefully you picked up a few ideas or just kind of saw what it would take to do something like this. And I want you to remember that it is always worth the effort to learn like I was doing right here. Create stuff while you're doing it and share with others. Y'all be safe and have fun.